Once said, started from the bottom. Now we're here. The entire family, led by Alan, has played an integral part in creating Silver Belly. That is two champions. May we know them and may we beat them. Fast, fast, slow, yeah, everybody's home. Start it up. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Jonathan Pogash, and I'm here today to welcome you to WSWA's Brand Battle Tournament. This is the alcohol industry's premier pitch competition. For the next few weeks, we'll be here Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where you will see and hear from some of the industry's hottest wine and spirits brands, battling it out category by category to compete in the 2023 Brand Battle Championship. This year's championship battle will be held in person for the first time in four years on stage at Access Live in April. With the who's who from the industry in attendance, a panel of expert judges will crown the 2023 Brand Battle Champion. Winners of previous brand battles have earned distribution partnerships and become some of the hottest brands in the U.S. wine and spirits marketplace. So if this is a who's who, who am I? Well, my name is Jonathan Pogash, but you might also recognize me as the cocktail guru. I am proud to be among the premier cocktail consultants and bartenders for restaurants and spirit companies. My signature cocktails can be enjoyed in many of North America's most upscale cocktail lounges and restaurants. And I've been in the hospitality industry as a restaurateur and entrepreneur for over two decades now. I'm thrilled to be your host today for the Whiskey Bourbon Tournament. I've been a longtime friend and partner of WSWA and have always looked forward to brand battle. It really is a terrific opportunity to see, hear, and taste new brands on the forefront of growth and opportunity. Today, you will be hearing from six different whiskey and bourbon brands who will spend a few minutes each presenting information about their products. After each presentation, the judges will have a few minutes to ask questions and provide feedback. I encourage all of you watching to add your own questions and thoughts in the chat box at the bottom of the screen. We will try to answer all questions that come through during the tournament. At the end of today's competition, we will announce our category winner from our judges' votes. The winner of today's tournament will move on to the championship brand battle live on stage in Orlando on April 3rd. Well, okay, shall we get to it? Uh, I'd first like to start off our competition by enjoying, uh, by introducing the esteemed panel of judges that we have with us today. Together, this group of wholesalers and retailers represent businesses varying in size from across the country and bring over 100 years of combined experience and expertise in the wine and spirits industry. These industry leaders are always looking for the next up and coming brand. First up, joining us from Nashville is our retailer judge, Brian Kidd, general manager at Bob's Steakhouse, Steak and Chop House. Brian is a level one sommelier and executive bourbon steward and wine director. He has built a career managing top restaurants, including Morton Steakhouse, and is a certified tourism ambassador and a member of the Bourbon Brotherhood. Welcome, Brian. Joining us from Hartley and Parker in Connecticut is David Rosenberg. As a third generation owner, David strives for greatness in an increasingly dynamic and competitive market through a strong work ethic and by challenging the status quo. Currently, David is working on an MBA at Cornell University and plans to bring new ideas and skills to Hartley and Parker as they reach forward into the future. Next, we are fortunate to be joined by Steve Fetty from humble beginnings as a bottle flipping TGI Fridays bartender. Wow, he has risen to become Artistry and Innovation Director for Allied Beverage of New Jersey, where he oversees a dynamic portfolio of artisanal brands, account menu development, and spirits education. 
Steve has curated and collaborated on menus for over 250 bars and restaurants and is an award-winning mixologist and certified spirit professional. Welcome, Steve. From Nashville, Tennessee, we welcome Ryan Moses, Chief Operating Officer of Best Brands, a wholesale beverage alcohol distribution and import company. Ryan began his career at General Electric and currently serves on the WSWA board where he chairs the Finance Committee and is the past president of the Council for Leadership Development. Next up is Sly Cosmopolis, a preeminent mixologist and premier wine and spirits professional who is Director of Beverage Marketing for RNDC. Sly provides valued training and educational beverage consulting se seminars across the RNDC national footprint. And her cocktails have been featured on Vanderpump Rules, Good Morning Texas, Daytime, and American Airlines, American Way. Welcome, Sly. And finally, from Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits, we have Ray Lombard, who was recently promoted to the Executive Vice President and General Manager for Craft Spirits. In his current role, Mr. Lombard drives the strategy for Southern Glazers Craft Spirits portfolio. This includes overseeing the company's new craft spirits division across the country and leading all craft spirits sales and support functions as part of Southern Glazers' new SG Plus Enhanced Customer Service, Fine Wine and Craft Spirits Strategy. Mr. Lombard also manages craft spirits supplier onboarding, contracts, management, marketing, and performance. Well, thank you all for participating as judges for today's competition, and I look forward to hearing your feedback for the contenders and their products. Now, let's get to the part you are all registered to see our contenders. This category received one of the largest number of entries and had a very, very competitive group of companies. We're very excited to hear from six unique companies who were selected to talk about their products, representing a wide variety of new brands. The brands we will hear from today are Blackland Bourbon, The Busker Irish Whiskey, Rupert's Exceptional Canadian Whiskey, R6 Blue Corn Bourbon, Hand Barrel Bourbon, and Silver Belly Whiskey. Well, now that we know the players, let's get started. Please welcome our first contender of this tournament, Marcus Kiprios from Fort Worth, Texas. Marcus attended culinary school at night while pursuing an illustrious legal career. After earning sommelier and distilling certifications, he quit his legal practice to open Blackland Distillery, which landed a spot as one of USA Today's top 10 new craft distilleries in 2021. Take it away, Marcus. Thank you. Uh, really excited to be here uh, also to kick these things off, uh, especially with the spirit that we've entered in the competition this year, just because it's what I would uh, somewhat call a non-traditional bourbon, uh, almost a controversial bourbon, if you will, in the world. Um, and and I, I like to address the elephant in the room because for what when I built this distillery, our goal and mission um, just because of my culinary background and our passion for food and wine and spirits, which is what I am and what the focus is, has always been to elevate craft. That has been um, our goal. That is what we are about. And we are all about quality. Um, and so when we launched our first four spirits, we launched a vodka, a gin, a bourbon, and a rye. Um, and those have done very well uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, but when you talk about something like this, which is our fifth spirit that was really launched into distribution in 2021, the Texas Pecan Brown Sugar Bourbon, um, there are some people that will look at this and say, well, um, it's a flavored whiskey or it is a sugar whiskey. And to them, that translates into this is substandard in a way or unauthentic or this is a fad. And the irony of that um, thought process is that I created this product. Uh, in response to going to a number of liquor stores uh, early on and watching the world buy Fireball and Screwball and Crown Apple. And on the one hand, I don't personally like these products because they either have too much cinnamon or there's too much sugar. And the, the essence of these is that they're not balanced. They're perhaps too sweet or again, too much cinnamon or too much flavor. And so like everything that we have done, we attempted to elevate the sugar or flavored whiskey category. Um, and from that, we created the Texas Blackland uh, Pecan Brown Sugar Bourbon. Um, I'm really happy with the spirit in that it is an elevated flavored whiskey. I keep saying that, but um, from the bottle to the quality of the ingredients to the alcohol, uh, I find it to be incredibly well-balanced. Um, 
we went through about 20 different iterations of sugar to land on a Muscovado sugar that we import from Africa, just like food ingredients are everything. Um, I do think it tends to be a little bit sweet, but it balances out at the end with the bourbon. Um, we steep it overnight in pecans and that finish with the pecan is a really nice finish that you that allows um, both the drinker and, and the cocktail maker to do a lot of different things. So we've seen a lot of on-premise success with this brand. Um, specifically, uh, we see uh, where you don't need necessarily a demerara or simple syrup because the spirit itself is sweet enough. We do a lot of old fashions that way without the simple syrup. We call it pecan uh, old fashioned that way, a Texas pecan. Um, and then we do sort of an espresso martini, which is really nice. We see that out in the world um, because the, the combination of the coffee and the espresso uh, and the bourbon work really well together. I will just say, in all honesty, the popularity of this spirit has even surprised me. Um, we sold about 50,000 bottles of this last year. We're in 12 states now, and it's killing it in the UK. And I think a lot of that is everyone's looking for the next big thing. They're looking for something different. There's so much saturation in vodka and gin and, and bourbon too, even though I make bourbon. Um, this is special. This is different. Uh, people tend to gravitate towards it. Um, and that really has been the success of the brand, not just because it's different, because it's really good. The quality is good. The balance is there. The packaging is there. The price point is um, really competitive for what it is. And so the totality of all of that um, makes this spirit special. All right. Well, thanks, Marcus. Yeah. Now let's bring back our esteemed panel of judges. Uh, a little bit of Q&A, judges. Let's start with uh, Sly from RNDC. What are your thoughts or uh, questions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, great presentation. So knowing that you kind of um, a tech approach and non-traditional and, and you said, you know, you use the word controversial. Um, what, from a marketing perspective, um, what creative campaigns have you recently created that are not like advertising led? So, you know, knowing that you are kind of a tech approach, like, uh, you know, like for, from an innovation, you know, like incorporation of like game of, you know, uh, gamification or apps or integration with social media or, or, you know, what are some new ways of communication or channels of communication um, are you doing from a marketing perspective to get that entire message that you said to your targeted consumer? So we rely heavily on social media here, also as a younger distillery. Um, and we've noticed that, and our social media has really uh, blown up in the last few years. I think now we're the eighth most followed Texas distillery um, for a brand that was just launched really in 2019 overall. Uh, and that's a big part of our um marketing department, but we use a lot of influencers. We use a lot of focus on everything that's good for us from the bottle, right, to the to our tasting room, which is um, an award-winning tasting room because it's a place for people to come and see it. But then using, being out in the world and really focusing on the on-premise of where they're using it, how they're using it. I think if you look at our social media and the photography of the cocktails specifically and the places that they are, um, where we're trying to get to as well, it's like, is, is very important because um, as, as everyone wants to be everywhere and there's high volume, we all want volume and we all want to sell. We also wanna be in the right places and it has to be consistent with the brand. Um, so we really try and focus on those very cool, new, modern, uh, and also sophisticated uh, type places where the brand is, whether it's like a steakhouse or a very cool uh, trendy bar, those are very important to us. But we are inundated with requests every day on, from our social media of, oh, you're now in Oklahoma or you're, you're in Albuquerque. Where can I find that? How do I do that? Um, but I would say 95% of our marketing budget is on social media uh, and it's worked really well for us to target in on our demographic, which is an interesting demographic, by the way, um, for this spirit. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Sly. Uh, Ray, what are your thoughts? So, uh, no, definitely... Uh... Not the not the uh, conventional uh, product proposition, and it sounds like you know your competitive set quite well, and uh, and uh, on your own you've been uh, you've been scaling the brand. Um, who is, um, I know you're doing the social media and you have great Instagram uh, footprint and so forth, but who's your uh, who's your consumer uh, 
have you gotten, gained any insights as to who your consumer is and how they're using the product? Yeah, I would say a, a large part of our consumer is uh, women uh, from 25 to 40 who often will use the tagline of, oh, this is a whiskey I can drink. And then it is men in a very similar, in a very similar age category who have just, um, for their palates, don't prefer straight bourbon or, or you know, straight rye later on down the road. Um, because it's just overly assertive and too much alcohol for them, right? It is sort of a balance in between those. Um, and I say that because we have four other spirits, so we can really hone in on the consumer. Um, but this is a male and female, though I will say it, it tends to dominate. It tends to slightly go towards more female. Um, but both men and women drink that in that 25 to 40 category. Excellent. Oh, okay, I think we have time for a quick question. Uh, David Rosenberg. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Hey, Marcus, great, great job. Great presentation. And I really love the product. I just want to provide you a little bit of feedback. Sure. First of all, before I get into it, your commitment to the 50 ml being a replica bottle in, in glass, no less, I, is hats off to you. I, I wish we saw more of that. That's a really nice commitment. And I'm sure it's not inexpensive, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to see that it, it helps kind of create that banner effect on shelves. People like to throw those really nice 50 mLs around. That was that's a nice commitment. Thank you. Uh, my feedback for you, and it sounds like you really know who your customer is, but if you want to hit your addressable market really strong, make sure that your market and the consumer knows exactly who you're trying to be. So we had a great presentation from you here today, but you're not going to be there every time someone walks into a retailer. Right. Your bottle, it, it looks nice. The, the liquid's great. I just tried it. I think it is exactly as you said. It, it is a flavored whiskey, but it actually is a nice flavored whiskey. It's not cheap. It's not a college shop type of a product. It fits that niche of people who want to be whiskey drinkers but are apprehensive because it's high proof or it's harsh or what have you. This is really nice, but make sure people don't walk away thinking, eh, it's probably another one of those you know, fireballs, uh, this, you know, have some marketing that really helps reflect what you're presuming to be um, so that it gets across because you're just not going to be there to offer everybody that that explanation. If you can do that, I think you're going to create a market that people are, are dying to jump into. So well, well done. That's, uh, that's good. That's good that. feedback. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great feedback, David. Um, well, Marcus, thank you very much for kicking us off. Now on to our second competitor. We have Woody Kane, brand ambassador for Busker Irish Whiskey. Woody has been part of the professional spirits world since 1999. He launched a trade show and bar staff training initiative across Ireland and joined Royal Oak Distillery in 2014, where he acts as an educator and passionate master storyteller. Welcome, Woody. Absolutely. Actually, you might be on mute, Woody. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, absolutely wonderful to get a chance to get in front of you guys. Um, I'm here with the Busk Irish Whiskey. When it says, yeah, I joined uh, Royal Oak Distillery in 2014, that's actually when we started our dream of building a distillery because our distillery um, began with the, the, the concept of Augusto Reina, who is the owner of Ilva Serono. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to create the Godfather, which is, of course, this um, like a, a, an Irish-Italian um, uh, feel to uh, an old fashioned. And he had Di Serrano, he owns Di Serrano, and he wanted something with equal quality and value to it that would match and pair with this beautiful, uh, this almond liqueur that he had, this Di Serrano. So uh, coming over to Ireland, he saw the wonderful, wonderful, amazing Irish whiskies we have here. I mean, whiskey all started in Ireland, and sure, why wouldn't we be fantastic? So what he did is he said, that's fine, but what I want to do is I want to stand behind the quality of what I offer. And that was very important to us from the very start. So 2014, the dream started. By 2016, we had a world-class distillery built on the grounds of Royal Oak, which is in County Carlow in Ireland, where I am from and lived all my life. And I have been involved in this from the very, very start. So while I'm global brand ambassador for the Busker, my heart is really here at Royal Oak and enjoying what it is that we do. So when it comes to what we do is we create the um, only 
distillery in, in the world because of pot still being a category in Ireland. Uh, we, we are the only distillery that actually produce all types of Irish whiskey under one roof and release it to the public under, of course, the Busker Irish Whiskey. Now, one of the things that we really have a strong standpoint is, is the sense of quality and, and just to be to be authentic of who we are. So we are there in the distillery producing this beautiful spirit. And it was on Easter Sunday of 2016 when the very first spirit came from, from our stills. This is um, the concept was driven then by creating the busker, which is a, a modern take on that beautiful Irish tradition of whiskey. We keep that tradition alive by producing your grain, your malt and your pot just from our distillery. No other liquid is inside those bottles apart from our own. And we proudly say that. And of course, then we have a beautiful blend. The blend is a balance of all three types together. This wasn't just a case of saying, OK, Let's see what we have. Let's get it out there. We went over to, to, to America. We actually met with people in America and we had those taste tests and we had some of the different blends we had. And we had them up against some of the market leaders over there as well, uh, all, all around. And this was actually the blend that was chosen. And it's the one we went with. So we really see the potential for this in the taste profile of, of uh, Americans. It's, uh, it's really there. It's really strong. What we wanted to do as well is we wanted to make it approachable. That's what Irish whiskey is. Whiskey is about sharing it with a friend, but you've got to get it first. So what happens often is people will try the blend. They stop there. They do tend not to move up into the more premium side of testing out the singles because price point. So we actually said, let's have an affordable price point as well, because we want to be able to move out and let people trade up. So while we're looking at the blend, we bring that out, depending, of course, what state you're in, you're looking at about $24.99 to $27.99 for our blend. Then when it comes to singles, if you look at any comparison in there, you are moving up into the, 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 the $60, the, the $70, the $80. We have it about $29.99 to $32.99 to allow it to be approachable, to allow people to trade up, to be able to give them that accessibility to what Irish whiskey has to offer. And of course, the, the really fantastic thing about it, especially when it comes to the blend and our grain, is that we use Marsala casks. So it's unusual to use Marsala casks. And we're just blessed because Augusto Rena, that wonderful man that started all, all, all of this off, actually, that company owns Cantina Florio from 1833, one of the oldest wineries in Sicily. And we get those casks shipped directly over. So our cask profile really works well, too. So that's really what the all right. has to offer. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you. Great job, Woody. Uh, now let's bring back our panel of judges for a bit more Q&A. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Brian, go ahead. Well, what do you have? Hey, Woody. Uh, how are you? Oh, good, Brian. Good, mate. Um, uh, I really, I tried your I, I tried your product. I, I thought it was great. Uh, great. Thank it, was, you. It, was, it was mild. Um, uh, I did like the, I really like the, the retail packaging. Is that something you really focused on yeah. is that that sort of like gift set kind of thing? Yeah. So when you, when you look at um, your, your look, you, you, the thing about this, it's about taste, you know, I mean, our, our taste, our, our sort of a, the taste to purchase ratio is fantastic, but in order to get people to look at it first, it's got to look well. And our bottle reflects that so well, it reflects not just, um, uh, that that concept but it reflects who we are so with the bottle alone we went for like transparency because that that's what we're like we are who we are we are a distillery here in ireland making some fantastic liquid so that's where we went transparency you can see what i love really because the the whole concept of the busker is about that um street performer you might know as, as better it's the person who has a, a gift to offer be it song, be it playing an instrument, whatever it is, it's a quality they have that they want around there. Not just on the street here in Carlow or Dublin or Galway. It's about getting it all around. And how they did that in the past, of course, was um, you would travel, you would get your boarding pass. We didn't have any scanners back, back, back in the day. So what they did is they took it, they ripped it and handed it back to you. We honour that. We honour those wanderers, those people who are bold enough to travel by a little tear on the label it, it it lets it speak 
our authenticity and who we are. We proudly say that on, on, on our product as well to let them know this is Ireland. This is Royal Oak Distillery. We're proud to be who we are. And of course, uh, when it comes to the packaging, messaging is very important. So when you go in each one of ours, it gives a little clue on the side. Our triple triple cast, triple smooth, that smoothness is mentioned on it. So it's nice and easy and gentle to take. When it comes to, for instance, our single malt, we have a note to the fruit side of what you're going to get from that. When it comes to the grain, the sweetness, and when it comes to the pot still, that characteristic of iron, that spice is there as well to explain that to you. And to make sure that people get that message, we also have our discovery pack. So this brings the full experience of the traditional side of, of Irish whiskey home because you get 200 mil each of your grain, your malt and your pot so they can find out what they like, what suits their palate. So next time they're out, if it is just a blend they had before, but they got an experience of this, they can trade up easily and they know what they're going to buy is something that will work on their palate as well. Thanks, Woody. Uh, Got to get in uh, another question. Steve Fetty, what are your thoughts? Uh, what a great presentation. Uh, I honestly just want to grab a pint and have some whiskey with you. You sound like a fantastic guy. You um, and we will. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm over there. That's what I love about uh, you guys. You, you welcome me every single time I go over there because, like I say, this is not just the, it's not just like a, a brand that's just to put up on a shelf. It's a brand to be shared. So I, t- and that's I tend- what comes to my question. Um, I, I love the, I love the, the team orientedness, everything's under one roof, individuality. You're also, I love the packaging. It's simple. It's not overcomplicated. I mean, Grant, everybody on this panel here can look at a bottle of whiskey and we can geek out on it. But I think what we like about your packaging the most is that it's approachable. It's simple. It tells me what I need to know. And I don't need to know a ton about Irish whiskey to get on board with this. Um, I'm interested to see what your marketing plans are as far as like how you're going to push that whole everything under one roof personality is the busker thing i think that is going to be something that's going to help you build this brand no 100 percent. and i mean at the moment we are in all all open states we're already in all open states um, and we're going to focus on 15 main states we're going to work those we're going to maximize the potential in those and then we'll start to expand once uh, once we hit that how we do it Look, we're partnering up with quite a lot of different uh, different people. We've got quite a lot in the music wise. I mean, I was over there in in Texas um, just during during the summer, and what we did there, which was fantastic, was we we sponsored the some music. Uh, so the place called Ferris Wheeler. If anyone is over there, if you're in Dallas, go to it. It's fantastic, brilliant people, lovely people own it, and we had music. We had it there. We had a tasting included in it, so it really led very well to them understanding the whole concept of what it is that we're doing, and it's like liquid to lips is what's important. We also are partnering up with um with, with bar stools, so the whole March Madness is going to be part of it. That's that's a big thing for us as well. It's about moments because that's what the busker is about. It's about those moments and how to celebrate those. And it is through that that you really get the essence of what whiskey is about. Because as I always say, whatever whiskey is yours is the one you should be drinking. But make sure you're drinking it with a friend. You know, so let's, it's those moments. Let's get a quick. Let's get a quick. Sorry to interrupt. A quick question. Uh, Ryan's chomping at the bit. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. As kind of a whiskey nerd myself, um, yeah. my question's more in terms of the makeup of the juice. Or is everything being distilled by by the distillery itself? Or are you bringing any other outside juice? And then kind of what's the the age of okay. what's in the bottle and how question. is that working? It's a good question and one I'm very happy to answer because it's all our own juice. Every single drop in there. I mean... We're in, Carlo is the, the, the heart of the barley growing area of Ireland. So you get your best barley from this area. And we use all local ingredients. Put a pin in our, in our distillery, a circle about 60 kilometers or miles. You will find all of the ing- raw ingredients that we use for that. And we are proud to use those and stand by them for the quality that we are able to produce from from the distillery so yeah it's it's all ours it's uh it's one of the things that we we're definitely just proud of being able to do i mean ireland has this wonderful rich heritage of this tradition and we're just happy to be able to stick with that 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 whole local side of being able to source exactly from where where we are well thanks woody i appreciate that very much uh that was great next up we will hear from caitlin quinn about rupert's exceptional canadian whiskey Caitlin is Master Distiller for Eau Claire Distillery in Calgary, Canada. She earned a Master's in Brewing and Distilling in Edinburgh, Scotland, after deciding chemistry was not her cup of tea and has a reputation for bridging the art and science of of distilling. She led the distillation of Eau Claire's award-winning core products, the creation of canned cocktails and tonic waters, and is perfecting its growing whiskey program. 
Welcome, Caitlin. Thank you. Um, I'm here with um, David Parn, um, our founder and CEO. So I'll let him talk first and then I'll talk more about the whiskey after. Yeah, so I, I'm David Farron. I'm the founder and, uh, and president of Eau Claire Distillery. And I'm sitting here with Caitlin, from, uh, who is our master distiller. Um, we're talking today, we have a full lineup of uh, whiskeys. We're a whiskey distillery in Canada in the foothills of the Canadian Rockies. So we, we live in a high altitude area, which is very unique. Uh, for distilling, and Caitlin will talk a little bit about that. Um, but uh, we also live in the home of uh, um, really the world's best barley. So uh, if you look at uh, uh, Alberta barley, um, we, we produce barley for the whiskey industry around the world. Um, I would say probably the majority of um, Scottish whiskies are made with Alberta barley. So it's, it's natural for us to make it here um, for the market. And um, and so we're, we're really talking about Rupert's today, which is uh, uh, Rupert's Exceptional Canadian Whiskey. Um, it's a, uh, a wonderful product that has been uh, very successful for us. Um, we, uh, we are uh, from the province of Alberta, but we do distribute um, across the, the Western and Central provinces of Canada. Um, and we're uh, probably one of the major uh, craft uh, whiskey brands in the in Canada. So uh, uh, maybe I'll I'll leave it to Caitlin to talk a little bit about uh, the the liquid itself. Yeah. So the fun thing, as David said, we're at a really high altitude. But anyone that's been um, anywhere near um, Alberta, Calgary, um, knows that we have major um, temperature shifts. So we go from minus thirty to plus thirty. Um, some and that's in Celsius. I don't know that in Fahrenheit. Apologies. <laughs> um, and that is usually in the space of like a couple of weeks sometimes. So what that does with the liquid, it'll expand and contract in the barrels that you can see behind me. So it pushes in and out of those staves and essentially super ages the whiskey. And again, with the lack of humidity we have here, um, compared to say in Scotland, where you get like a three percent angel share, we are getting eleven to twelve percent per year. So we're losing a bulk of our volume, but we're gaining ABV. So we're losing more water than whiskey. So we end up kind of concentrating the, the liquid as well. So we're ext extracting more from the barrel quicker as well. And just to talk a little bit about um, Rupert's itself and our branding. So we, um, we, we um, brand all of our products with what we call our social animals, which are iconic Canadian animals. Um, in Victorian dress, and um, and it's really resonated with the consumer, and um, and so Rupert um, is really a reflection of the history of Canada. So Rupert's land was uh, Hudson's Bay and Hudson's Bay Company, and stretched a, across a big swath of uh, of both Canada and the United States, um, and uh, and so it really is a, a a representative of of Canada and Canadian whiskey. So um, I think uh, in, in terms of uh, overall, like where it fits in the market, um, our product is uh, generally priced around $29.99 um, in most markets. So it's a very approachable, affordable whiskey. Um, it, uh, it's a very versatile one. Um, I think you would find that um, it is a Canadian whiskey with a little bit of a, a Scottish twist, um, which uh, makes it a very unique liquid but it's very smooth. It's, uh, it works on its own as well as with mix and in a drink. So uh, that's how we have created it so that it's very appealing. In terms of uh, uh, demographics, it, it would fit, I think, into sort of the, the classic whiskey demographics of sort of 35 to 55 skews towards males. But we're seeing more and more people because it's so approachable that it's, it's uh, definitely more females that are uh, enjoying it as well. So. Um, I think if you, you know, wanted to talk about our sort of the, the actual flavoring of the, the yeah. whiskey and, and how. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, as I said, the aging process kind of like super ages our, pro our product. So we're looking at our three-year-old spirit tasting around the six-year-old level for like other uh, brands um, in comparison. So what that does is the liquid that we are putting into these bottles is very complex a lot of apple notes um, because of the cherry casks we use you get a bit of the red fruit on the end and there is just like that hint of white pepper usually on the finish for most of our products including our single malts and the reports that we're talking about today all right well wonderful thank you great job caitlin and david uh, let's bring back our panel of judges for a bit more q a 
Uh, Sly, why don't we start with you this time? Perfect, yeah. And so many times, you know, we always hear about um, uniqueness and what's your place in the market and what have you. And I think you guys, you know, had a great presentation and hit a lot of great, um, you know, facts and points of, of difference with that. And then with, you know, smaller craft brands or brands that are just starting, you know, a lot of people, you know, might in their head say, you know, um, are you big enough to matter? But with when I say, you know, it's matter now, we all have the same target audience, right? We want that younger novice drinker all the way up to the whiskey aficionado, right? Um, and with the a lot of you know younger consumers, um, culture um, is pretty big. Um, does your company have and and it's great and it's um, you know with marketing and having reason to believe and what have you beyond you know the juice and what's in the bottle? Um, does your company have like a distinctive like culture focus? Or like, what's your perspective on social impact? Like, are you using some profits for a social good? I know that's really big for younger um, consumers. So, um, you know, what is your, you know, do you have a distinctive culture focus? Are you, is there a cause you support? Yeah, I think that um, we're, we're very focused on, um, on just the, uh, the concept of farm to glass, uh, which very much resonates, I think, with consumers today. Um, and we live and breathe it. So we actually do farm some of our own uh, uh, barley. Uh, we have a, a site uh, in Turner Valley that uh, is, is in a, a more rural area. And uniquely, we have a program where we farm with horses um, just a, a, as we did 100 years ago. And, um, and so that has very much resonated with the consumer because it, it's authentic and it's, uh, it's genuine. Um, we also have full circle um, with uh, with our product. So we we take the spent grain from the distillery, um, and we use that to feed cattle. Um, that is uh, that we actually serve in our own on our own premise. So everything that we can do um, to make uh, um, it a, a full sort of circle um, contribution, we do so. We also are big on sponsorship um, and uh, supporting community. So uh, in, in Alberta, in our home market, uh, we're very involved with, with uh, um, all of the local charities and, um, and we do a lot of events um, throughout the market. Uh, we have what we call our social animals um, who are um, our uh, ambassadors and our tasters. And, uh, and we're very big believers in, uh, in sort of liquid to lips and, and getting out there in the market. And I think that, um, you know, in, in terms of our overall, like we're, you know, we, uh, we sponsor sports teams, the, the, uh, the, um, the Oilers, the Calgary Flames, of course, in Canada, we're very focused on hockey, but, uh, but we're involved in a lot of different uh, sports. But all of that is because we really believe in integrating our brand into the community. Uh, Ray, what are your thoughts? Transitioning to the U.S., uh, how do you envision uh, engaging your, your consumer? What are some of the vehicles that you will use to, to uh, establish the brand? Uh, while whiskey has seen the boom, uh, the Canadian categories uh, has not been following at that pace. So uh, building a brand versus selling to a category is going to be a big part of your success. What are some of the uh, tactics which you foresee yourself using? I think we, um, I mean, we, we do use social media in a, in a big way and we, and we extend our brand through social media um, as, as many brands do. Um, I think because of where we come from and our experience in the market, um, we do understand the, um, the getting that brand out um, on premise um, and, uh, and in retail and doing as much tastings as we can. So that's where we, uh, we get involved and, and sponsor events and, and make sure that uh, uh, we're out there in the community um, and we don't spread ourselves too far. Um, we are, our success in Canada has been by focusing on individual markets and really growing them out so that uh, we're not spreading our, uh, our resources too far and that uh, we can create that brand awareness um, with, you know, within an individual market. So we're not trying to rule the world, but by doing shotgun, we're trying to do the rifle approach. All right. Uh, well, I think we have time for a quick, uh, another quick question. Brian, what do you have? I guess my question would be how 
how are, are you guys, are you guys just focused mainly on the retail or are you trying to get on the back bars and in, in, in your market and in the U S market? In Canada, we're in uh, most of the retail chains um, that would be of, uh, of any major note. Um, and we do a lot of independence as well. So it has been as whiskey um, tends to be, um, you know, primarily a retail brand, but to feed that retail brand, it's very important for us to be on premise. So, uh, you know, we, we focus on the right accounts and, uh, and make sure that that's something that, uh, that we do that uh, because the, the, on-premise and off-premise are obviously closely linked in terms of promoting brand. Okay, thanks, Caitlin and David. That's all we have time for. Uh, we are halfway through our brands who are presenting today. I hope you are all enjoying hearing from them and, and getting that feedback from our amazing judges. Uh, next up, we have Rob Rubens of R6 Distillery representing R6 Blue Corn Bourbon and R6 Straight Bourbon Whiskies. After a decade in corporate America, Rob opened his speakeasy inspired distillery with the aim of bringing the highest quality spirits to Los Angeles. He is the founder and head distiller for R6. Let's hear from you, Rob. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. Super excited to be here today and uh, very grateful for this opportunity. Also huge congratulations to all the other finalists that are here today too. Kudos and, and cheers to everybody for all the hard work. Um, with that, I'll jump right into it and chat about my background, which is actually <clears throat> totally different than whiskey. To start, it was working for a strategy consulting firm in strategy ops, marketing, and branding. And after the better part of a decade there, doing some soul searching and looking for something to provide more meaning, more, more tangibility, uh, share experience, and uh, that soul searching kind of made me reflect back on my great grandfather and his five brothers who actually started the Rubens Rialto Square Theater back in 1926. And that ties in our name. And the reason <clears throat> for that tie-in is taking the vision, making it reality, and then sharing that with other folks. So out of that, our sixth distillery was born. And what makes us unique? So we're a veteran and family owned brand. We're a cause focused brand where we actually partner with a facility out in <clears throat> that pairs veterans with PTSD or physical ailments with dogs and actually puts them through a training program together to help touch two lives with one. And our efforts aren't just financial, but also uh, time involvement with them too. And last uh, but not least, we're Los Angeles first bourbon, which is something really cool and something we're very proud of. Um, it allows us to define uh, Los Angeles and West Coast whiskey in a sense that most people think of Kentucky or Tennessee when they hear bourbon or whiskey. But for us, like, we actually get to add to that part of history with something very meaningful. So we've got two different expressions here, the R6 straight bourbon whiskey priced at $34.99 on the retail shelf. It's a uh, what I like to call our gateway whiskey. So it's a 75214 corn rye barley. Uh, grain bill, so more your traditional vanilla, caramel, um, oak, and some citrus from the rye end. And then on the far other end of the gateway whiskey is the California blue corn bourbon, which is much more complex, lends the whole spectrum of kind of like wow going on factor. And that's priced at $59.99 on the retail shelf. And that's a seven grain whiskey. So it consists of an organic California blue corn, four different malts, uh, high rye content, as well as some rolled oats. Both of these whiskeys have won a number of different awards uh, in the last <clears throat> in the last year alone. Excuse me, uh, over twelve awards, including golds and triple golds for packaging design as well as the contents within the bottle. Uh, so we're really proud of that. Um, some differences too with the whiskey and the California essence. Um, we have a lot of water extraction from our barrels, so at the end of it, um, we end up with a higher barrel proof than what we go into the barrel, so you get more extraction and more flavor components and takeaways. We also use different sized barrels for the uh, flavor extraction. Um, some of our, our growth has been very deliberate, just like the way we make our whiskey, and so our Keystone accounts uh, include Delta Airlines Sky Clubs at the airports here in California, the Duty Free stores, uh, as well as um, some bigger expansion with Bebmo Total Wine and Walmart as of this year. So we're super excited for that and the markets that we're in. Um, work really hard on activations and, and uh, boots on the ground, as well as growing the, um, the connection to our consumers with social media with over 30,000 followers on Instagram, which 
is something we worked really hard at because we realized that's where everything is trending right now. So um, with that, we're looking to accelerate our growth in a very meaningful way here uh, with this competition, boots on the ground, uh, philanthropic partnership, and really underscoring you know, that we're a cause-focused brand as well as a, a closely held family veteran-owned uh, company and Los Angeles First Bourbon. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank you again for the opportunity to be here and uh, happy to answer questions. Thanks, Rob. Uh, now let's bring back our panel of judges for some more Q&A. Brian, why don't you kick off our questions this round? All right. Um, so you, uh, I, I don't know if I missed this. Are you doing the distilling in California or are you getting your juice from somewhere in my area? Sure. We actually do a, a bifurcated approach. So the blue corn bourbon is 100% California grain distilled in house with us. And our straight okay. bourbon whiskey is um, is a blend of our whiskey with other whiskey. Okay, fantastic. All right, that's all I really need to know. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, how about you, David? What are your thoughts? Hey, thanks, uh, Rob. Thanks for the presentation. I, I really enjoyed uh, the nose. It really brought out some great, great complex characteristics that followed through in the palate. Even I, I was tasting the uh, the blue corn. And uh, even though it's a high rye, which definitely it is, you get such a complex palate. It's really nice. No one will know that unless you do tastings. So make sure part of your strategy as you go to market is getting it out there. It's cause market, which is great. You'll have experiential events, things that you'll be dealing with consumers that way. Make sure people are tasting the product. Um, it, it's, it's a really, really nice product. Couple of things. One, you put aged at least one year on the side of the bottle. At one year, it's not doing you any any favors. I, I might not put that at all. It says aged in American charred barrel in the front. Maybe just don't put how long it's aged on the side because at one year, that's, that's not really a benefit. Secondly, the R6 on the label, it's a little tough to recognize. You probably see the R and the six really easily, but for me opening a box and pulling the bottle out, I actually looked around to see what brand you were called. As a consumer walking in, not knowing what they're looking for amongst the sea of brown bottles, you may want to have something that's a little bit more easy to, to identify with. And if someone says, hey, go into the store and get a bottle of R6, it's awesome. Is someone else going to be able to find that bottle? So I was a little challenged in, in recognizing that brand name. Once I looked at the list of competitors and I saw R6, then I was able to identify your bottle. But just a little, little feedback at face value. That's all, the feedback, that's, David. Yeah, that's great. David with the amazing constructive feedback. That's awesome. Um, uh, Steve, Fetty, I know that you're, uh, you, you've probably got questions. What do you have? Like, and David actually took a couple of my questions. So I actually have a lot, a lot less now. Um, I'm in agreement with the, the label. I think it's a little, um, um, it's tough to read unless you know what you're looking for. Um, I think with the one year on the blue corn, I, I mean, I love a good blue corn bourbon. I think that's phenomenal. You're doing California source, seven grain. I think that's definitely a niche people are going to jump into, but either get rid of the one year or add some more years onto that because the way the bottle looks, it's to me personally, as a consumer, it's telling me something differently. And then when I taste it, I'm not getting that, I'm not getting that full story that you're, you're very passionate about. Um, other than that, I think, uh, I think it is a good product. I think it's just gonna need some more development, uh, more years and just overall some more time in the barrel. Sure. Appreciate that, Steve. And just to comment on the label component of it too. So the one that you've got is actually closer to a four and a half year, uh, whiskey. And so we're actually going through, we hit some supply chain issues with the labels and all those are being, um, redone, but appreciate very much the, the feedback on that. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, great. Thanks, Rob. Uh, now on to our next contender, Scott Perello of Hand Barrel Bourbon. Scott found success with two technology startups before co-founding Hand Barrel Bourbon, distilled in Kentucky. Scott, please tell us about your brand. Sure thing. Can you guys hear me okay? I had a little audio issue earlier. Yes, we okay. can. Right on. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity. Grateful for it. Uh, so I'm Scott. I'm one of the co-founders and, and the CEO of the brand. Uh, we're called Hand Barrel. Uh, we just launched this past October. We raised about 900K in funding in 2021 to get the brand off the ground. Um, we started with the packaging, right? So we took a 750ml glass barrel bottle and we applied a uh, water-based, eco-friendly, zero plastic 
uh, decoration technique. So uh, we left the bottoms transparent so you can see the fill level and uh, the cap is wax stick dipped for an added touch of craftsmanship and uh, to have zero plastic and there's no PVC or anything like that. Um, we have three expressions right now. This is our single barrel uh, that uh, has a tang tag with bottle number, barrel number and date. Um, we have a core, core blend, uh, which we work with Bardstown Bourbon Company in Bardstown, Kentucky and their chemists there. And we are launching a double oaked um, in, in April in our next bottling run. So three expressions right now, all 105 proof, all mash bill of 64, 24, uh, and 12. Um, so yeah, we're distributing. We, we, in the first 14 weeks, we've sold over a thousand cases um, in just three markets, Kentucky, Massachusetts, um, and online. And people are really uh, you know, vibing with the distinctive packaging um, the sustainability of, of the bottle. And it's like a great bar cart piece, right? We, our target customer is, is gifts. So whether it's for groomsmen or for a housewarming uh, or for birthday or Father's Day or holidays, um, we think this stands out. Um, and, you know, about a third of our orders right now have come online. So we have a pretty big affiliate marketing strategy, um, direct to consumer in the states where that's compliant. And uh, we've got a great pilot program going with Total Wine. It started in six stores, uh, two in Kentucky and four in Massachusetts. And it's been going so well that we've got placement in 21 more stores in 14 states where we don't have distribution yet. Uh, so in the process of onboarding new distributors, our, our goal this year is for about 8,700 cases. Um, and so we're uh, rapidly increasing our footprint. Um, we've had great kind of feedback from retailers that, you know, it's, the marketing is a lot of the marketing is in the packaging. It's much more expensive than a screen print or a bottle with a label, uh, but it stands out. So um, we've been doing tastings um, in Kentucky, uh, bottle signings with the founders and just supporting the brand at the founder level uh, in any way we can. Um, one of the other things about it is that, you know, we've tried to come out with a modern, a modern and contemporary take. So the black, the black expression is, a kind of paying homage to the barrel char. And because it's gonna be a double oaked and dumped into two new American oak casts, um, we thought that was like a really good fit. This being a more contemporary take on limestone, which is obviously key in, in Kentucky water and the single barrel being the rustic vintage uh, addition. Um, so this price points are 79.99 SRP, um, 64.99, and this will be also 79.99 when it launches. Um, we have a really cool uh, customization angle with the uh, with the digital printing technique. So this is conceptual. Uh, we're in kind of exploratory phase, but we're planning on doing some uh, bottles later this year as special editions. Uh, this one is conceptual for a uh, military or for Veterans Day in November. But we can easily change the wax color, change the art file, um, and you know create something that is stands out on a back bar or a bar cart. Um, and it has great bourbon, right? Like we're using uh, you know, Kentucky authentic bourbon. We're sourcing it right now from a tier one distillery. Um, you know, we didn't cut any corners on sourcing from outside of Kentucky where, you know, the barrel price is a lot less expensive, frankly. Uh, but we wanted this to be as authentic to what's in the oak barrel in the Rick house, uh, which is why we add very little water to it. Um, and we went through a lot of iterations of the blend before we landed on it. So. Yeah, that's kind of the the high level. I'll pause there. I'm not sure how aware I am on time. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, let's bring back our panel of judges for some Q and A. Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts? Yeah, thank you. Um, I would love to kind of get your feedback on the alternative packaging. If I if I think of other brands, the alternative packaging gets you in the door or gets it gets it gets it yeah. to the house, but. What are you going to do to keep the consumer? What, what are you going to do to differentiate? I mean, there's lots of juice coming from tier one distilleries in Kentucky. Why, why would I pay that price again for the second bottle? That's a great question. I think, um, you know, it's something that we, we've focused on is creating the best possible blend with that 64, 24, 12 mash bill. I think having the core line and, uh, you know, keeping that consistent and then constantly adding like limited edition bottles, like whether it's your team bottle or whether it's your, um, you know, a military bottle and then creating, you know, different expressions of the liquid itself. So like, for example, the, the military bottle that we're planning on later this year will be like a high corn, right? Like a 78, 12, 10, something along those lines. But yeah, I think refreshing the product lineup um, is, is critical. Uh, so 
people aren't buying it once and not opening it. But at the same time, even if they're buying it once and they like the juice and, you know, it's not their weekly drinker, you know, they might buy it for their a friend because they like the packaging. It's a cool story. It's it's small batch and, and it's craft. Thank you for the uh, question. Sl Sly, do you have any questions for Scott? Yeah, I was going to ask, and it's kind of riding the coattails of, of Ryan, um, you know, because it's a lot of, um, i hearing a lot of focus on the packaging and, you know, it's a big focus of it being gifted and what have you and in different packages. And so my initial question was going to be, you know, kind of focusing on the juice or, you know, what attributes are most important for those potential customers when they consider buying your product. Um, but so, what does success look like to you? Yeah, I think, look, I think the long-term vision is to grow into our own distillery, right? And kind of following brands that started sourcing bourbon initially, whether it was Whistle Pig or maybe Rabbit Hole or, um, or, 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 or some brands like that. And I think for us, you know, it's phase one is go out and get and focus on off-prem, right? And get placement in, in liquor stores where we can see repeat customers and case, strong case sales go deep into each market. Um, and then expand the, you know, into 40 states by the end of 2024. And, you know, I think we have the, we're, we have a lot of options with the business. It's, uh, you know, we have, we don't have a lot of overhead right now. Um, we're putting a lot of, of emphasis on, on the package to stand out, but we think that the bourbon is, is, is delicious. And we've gotten great feedback, uh, that it's really smooth for a high proof, you know, uh, barrel strength bourbon. And I think at the end goal slide, we We'd like to, we'd like to have our own distillery in Kentucky. And I'd like to, yeah. And the other part is just, you know, with the bottle being opaque, uh, that it's naturally protecting the, from, from, from sun, some, from sunlight, from UV rays, right? So just like it's aging in the Rick house, if this is, you know, in direct sunlight or indirect sunlight, if it's transparent, it can break down the bourbon over time. And so we, the opaqueness really protects the bourbon inside. And again, being authentic to the process of aging. Uh, we've got time for another quick question. Ray, what are your thoughts? Yes. Um, any strategy to build that consumer loyalty and that repeat customer? Uh, there are brands that are very seasonal or are synonymous yeah. with gift giving, uh, but to build a brand, to have that continuity, um, do you have anything in mind as to how you're going to keep that person coming back and buying the bottle every week or every other week versus when it's dads or grads or or yeah. uh, or mother's day etc yeah i think it's just i think it's just iterating on uh on you know working on for more proprietary blends that are different mash bills that that are uh you know unique and we can marry that to the artwork right and and so maybe introducing something that's at a, at a lower price point or a smaller a 375 or a one liter for on-prem only um i think those are all things that we're thinking about uh you know, behind establishing the core line. Okay, great. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, so Thank finally, uh, we've reached our sixth and final contender, Robbie Goldsmith. Robbie is an entrepreneur whose work making Nashville a hit destination for small group travel led to a reality TV show on CMT. A three-time founder, Robbie runs a full service marketing agency and is the CEO of Silver Belly Whiskey. Robbie, take it away. Hey, everybody. My name is Robbie Goldsmith from Nashville, Tennessee, and I am the CEO of uh, Silver Belly Whiskey, which is distilled exclusively for country music icon Alan Jackson. The first thing that we wanted to do when creating Silver Belly is, uh, is, is find a great juice. And we partnered up with Jonathan Call and Jacob Call, who is up in Kentucky, KSP, sorry, KYDSP10. Um, and created an awesome 13% rye heritage blend with them that we sourced from. The second thing we did here is get Alan involved. Like everything that Mr. Jackson does, he is hand involved in this process. His eldest daughter, Maddie Jackson, is a certified sommelier. They sat down over countless steak dinners with all the different options to create the juice and the blend that we have. Um, and we're super excited about it. Uh, as you can see here on the label, the name Silver Belly, that is the color of Alan's iconic cowboy hat. He's worn the same hat on stage for over 35 years. Um, and then second, as you see here, one thing that we did very unique is that we don't like to say that we batch 
our bourbon that we chart it. So every batch that we do actually has a new number one song that plays to his 35 number one hits over time. And uh, it brings something that the consumers can kind of come back to. Alan has over 7 million fans across social media and his platforms uh, that we obviously have a, a very unique target market for this. Um, we launched June 24th of last year, right in front of his 2022 tour that went across the United States. We use that as a guide to get into over 17 markets in the first six months. We have eight more markets we are targeting for 2023. And uh, we are currently at a price point of $39. That was very important to Alan and his family as we wanted uh, something that all of his blue collar fans could really approach. Um, so yeah, we're excited about that. We have a couple of new SKUs coming out here uh, in 2023 that we're really excited about. And, uh, and yeah, we believe we have a great product. Uh, we understand where we're at in the market. We have, like I said, over 7 million fans to, to use in there. We have an e-commerce play that we can go direct to consumer with. Uh, but then also we know that we can create marketing campaigns uh, with our background to get all of Allen's fans to stores across the United States, um, which gives us a really solid base to build this brand off of in the future. Thanks, Robbie. Uh, now let's bring back our panel of judges for some final Q&A. Uh, Brian, what are your thoughts? Uh, I knew you were coming back to me. Um, let's see. Um, so you're getting your uh, juice from uh, Kentucky. Um, whereabouts in Kentucky? Yeah, so we source from Green River Distillery, which is a part of the okay. Bard Sun Company. Yeah, absolutely. Good juice. Um, and what's, uh, what's the age on it? It is, I mean, I know you're blending. Yeah, so this is our base skew. Uh, it is straight just under three years old. Okay, so it's under so age statement. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks, Brian. Some nice, con concise, concise questions and answers. I like it. Um, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, David, uh, let's go with you. You have any questions for Robbie? Yeah, thanks. Um, I may be swimming upstream here a little bit, but as not a non-country music fan, do you feel or do you have any experience trying to roll this out to the to the greater market or do you really niche yourself into a smaller subset? Do you feel that's a bit of a challenge? You know, I see a brand that's tied to someone I'm not familiar with or I, re, I mean, I'm familiar with who Alan Jackson has just don't listen to his music. Maybe I'll just go somewhere else. I mean, I'm in the business so I, I can see past all that stuff. But an average consumer might say, well, that's not me. I'm, you know, a metal fan. I'm going to go for the metal stuff or something that has no tie to anyone. How do you circumvent something like that? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And I think, you know, without, you know, poking the elephant in the room, there is a stigma con combined with celebrity, you know, spirits, right? And I think where it really boils down to is myself, my COO, and, and the other people involved is we are bourbon consumers first. So that was why we really emphasized where we got our juice. We knew we had to come in with a quality juice and then also roll out more quality things in the future. You know, I'm really excited for us to get into the age game and, and, to, and to do some things where, you know, at the end of the day, we know we're gonna get his fans, right? And we have an amazing fan base there that we can pull from. But like you said, for us to make Silver Belly a brand name in bourbon, we need to come out with some awesome products and we need to come out with some really quality stuff. So I see it as a, as a fantastic challenge. And we know we started great with, you know, our juice from Kentucky at Green River. We have a great mash bill. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, we just need to focus on the product. If the product is good, everyone will drink it. Uh, Steve Fetty will round out the questions for the entire afternoon. Steve. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Robbie, great presentation, tasty product. I love the passion behind it. Uh, I guess my question for you is going to be, uh, what is the long-term plan here? I mean, you know, Alan Jackson fans are around. I've, I've heard some of his music, but again, not really, not really my cup of tea. Um, what's the long game here? Yeah, the long game, it's a great question. Thank you. The long game is to really add to his iconic stature. He wants something that can be a capital, you know, like an exclamation point on his illustrious career. I mean, he's had countless, you know, number ones, obviously 60 million plus albums sold. Um, and it's really just to put a cherry on top and create a brand that can carry a lineage of his name, the family's name and, and everything. And something he's been drinking whiskey for longer than most of us have been alive. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's really what he wants to do is to create something that, um, that he's super proud of because as, you know, as we know, the career won't last, you know, forever. Um, but this product can. Uh, follow up question to that. I guess I was trying to get to, are you looking to have your own distillery and make your own juice and really carry on that legacy? Or 
uh, you're just looking to continue to source and blend and, and kind of build up that way. Yeah, I think it uh, it may eventually work into a hybrid model where we do both. I don't think a full-on operational distillery is in uh, Mr. Jackson's future plans, um, but he's you know we're mainly focused on creating a brand that him and his family you know can live in their legacy. All right, excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Great job. Thank you, Robbie, uh, and thank you to all of our competitors and judges. Now we will send our judges to do that difficult task of deliberating on this category winner who will move on to the championship round live on stage at Access Live on April 3rd in Orlando, Florida. While our judges are deliberating, we are going to share some important and relevant category info uh, from our partners at SipSource. Details about Access Craft and Access Live. Don't you go anywhere. excited for you to join us at the WSWA's Access Live in Orlando this April and to celebrate the wine and spirits industry. We hope you'll join me and Blaine in April. We're excited to launch our handcrafted vodka melee, a sustainable brand built with our planet in mind and made of the purest natural ingredients from Montana. Okay, aloha. See you soon. Wow, aloha. Um, that is amazing. Uh, well, um, Folks, this has been great. And I have to say that the uh, offline chat for the judges has been extremely informative and entertaining. Um, some of the most enthusiastic uh, judging offline comments that we've seen in a while. So this has been a very competitive category. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you got some great information as our judges were determining today's winner of the Whiskey Bourbon Brand Battle Tournament. Uh, the winner will proceed to the Brand Battle Championship in Orlando live on stage at Access Live. And without further ado,
today's whiskey bourbon category winner is oh wow the busker irish whiskey guys that's Big fantastic. congratulations to you on your win fantastic I'm guys Woody. well look i have to say slaunch it <laughs> It's always good to, to hear that. And look, there's going to be plenty more for me to talk about. You guys, uh, I'm an Irish man. I don't stop talking. So, this... <laughs> Slancha, uh, your award will be mailed to you in the next few weeks. I would like Fantastic. to thank all of our contenders who participated today. Uh, Woody and uh, the busker, someone from WSWA will be contacting you later today uh, to discuss the next steps. And we look forward to seeing you at our next tournament this Thursday, February 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard for the Modifiers Tournament. Thanks so much, everyone. I will see you at Access Live. Will you see? Wait, I will see you. You will see me. I want to see you at Access Live. Let's just see everybody. Cheers. <laughs>